We live in an age of high medical technology. There are now machines which can see inside the body. There is a plethora of pills and drugs for almost every affliction known to mankind. And surgery has come a long way since its origins, which are often seen as, at best, painful and amateurish. However, archaeologists have an insight into the history of medical care and the afflictions which our ancestors suffered from through the human remains which we excavate. Some of the most obvious injuries which show up are broken bones. Here, for example, is a broken arm. Occasionally, bacterial infections can deform bones, and sometimes the rigours of manual labour leave marks on the bones. For example, here, Schmoll's nodes has pitted the spine through a lifetime of activity. For as long as people have suffered from injuries and ailments, such as here, the effects of syphilis, people have been attempting to cure them by any means they see fit. One of the earliest practices known to medical science is the act of trepanation. This involves the drilling of the skull in order to release evil spirits, or perhaps blood on the brain. Here, for example, is a girl's skull which was drilled 6,000 years ago in the Neolithic with a stone tool. And surprisingly, many of these skulls show signs of growth after the procedure has taken place, indicating they survived. An early proponent of plastic surgery was Roman encyclopedist Celsus. He advocated procedures which have very similar effects to those which we see on sale today. The Edwin Smith Papyrus outlines the detailed knowledge that people in ancient Egypt had of everything from the treatment of tumours to reflexology and the benefits of exercise. We even know that the ancient Egyptians developed prosthetics. Here is an ancient Egyptian wooden prosthetic toe. At the same time, a traditional medicine system known as Ayurveda emerged in India. Written in Sanskrit, it outlines how one can improve one's health through meditation and also the application of particular herbs. The use of this chemistry ranged from face masks to the use of narcotics to aid patients during operations. Surgical implements were recorded as early as 2500 BC in ancient Egypt. Not only have most cultures since then had specific toolkits for surgery, but the tools themselves have changed remarkably little. From the Iron Age right up until today, the tools would be recognisable to any surgeon. The only difference being that modern implements can be separated from their handles in order to sterilise the blades. Surgery in ancient Rome often developed in the hospitals of the gladiators. Here, for example, is an arrowhead being removed from a soldier's leg. After the fall of the Roman Empire, medical texts were translated into Arabic, and complicated procedures were developed, such as eye surgery, by the polymath al-Zarawi. While such knowledge continued to develop in the Middle East and the Mediterranean, here, for example, is a metal prosthetic patella, or kneecap, people in much of northern Europe weren't so lucky. Medical care often resolved around the pseudoscience of bloodletting, or very, very crude procedures such as eye surgery with the patient sitting up. When plagues came, many practitioners simply hid from the foul smells, stuffing masks with sweet-smelling incense and herbs, simply trying to hide away from what was termed a miasma, polluted air around the ill and the sick. The application of leeches was only slightly better than the act of bloodletting. But in all the history of human afflictions and illness, which do you think has had the most dramatic effect on our population? Plague? Cholera? What do you think? Well, the answer is tooth decay, or caries. Since the Neolithic, people have ate more carbohydrates and more sugars, resulting in teeth being far more prone to rotting. But almost immediately, archaeologists have observed various forms of toothbrush being developed around the world. This extremely short medical history charts the highs and lows of medical care which archaeologists observe from the Paleolithic onwards. Archaeology shows that for the most part our treatment of the ill has always attempted to avoid brutality. So if anyone ever tells you that archaeology isn't exactly brain surgery, on the contrary, archaeology is precisely that.